I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Montague County Commission for October 25th, 2017. Please note for the record that all commissioners are present. If you would, please stand for a moment of silence, meditation, and silence to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Renetta. Consent and approval, please. Good morning. <clears throat> We have 20 exonerations for 8,199.09. Minutes for July 26th, August 2nd, 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. September 6th, 13th, 20th, 27th. October 4th, 11th, and 18th. Also for the Board of Assessment Appeals on October 18th. Vouchers for General County, $95,098.91. .98 Coal Severance, $10,478.43. 911-4956-24, Chestnut Ridge Park, $1,051.84, Camp Muffley, $3,797, Mason Dixon Park, $414.12, Sessor's Valuation, $249.06, Purchasing Card Vouchers, General County, $13,192.65, 911-728.36, Home Confinement, $7,423.01, Chestnut Ridge Park, $326.15, Camp Muffley, 283.28, Mason Dixon Park, 36.37, for a voucher total of 138.035.42. We have uh, position vacancies for boards and authorities, the West Run Zoning, uh, West, Run, West Run Board of Zoning Appeals, Planning Commission, Historic Landmarks Commission, Abandoned and Dilapidated Property Enforcement, Deputy Sheriff Civil Service Commission, and also the Camp Muffley Advisory Board. Fiduciary orders for October the 25th, 2017. We have statement of services for Cynthia Van Stafford, Lynn Crane, and George Armstead, and a third quarter status report also for George Armstead. Move for approval. <laughs> second. It's been properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Introduction of new employees. Have we any? Hearing none, I uh, will move to comments from the public. We are now open for comments from the public. Hearing none, we will move on to Colleen Kuhn and grants. Good morning, Good morning Good morning. Colleen. Okay, um, I have a grant application for the Hazel Ruby McQueen Charitable Trust for Camp Muffley for the full amount of um, $600,000 that needs to be signed today. And then I also have um, the grant co contract agreement for the VOCA grant. That'll need to be signed. Um, the resolution is the Commission of Montegalia County met on Wednesday, October 25th, 2017, with a quorum present and passed the following resolution. Be it resolved that the Commission hereby authorizes the Honorable Edward A. Hawkins, President of the Montegalia County Commission, to act on its behalf to enter into a contractual agreement with the Division of Justice and Community Services to receive and administer grant funds pursuant to the provisions of the Victims of Crime Act grant program. And with that, you'll have to sign on the contract, the cert certification regarding, regarding lobbying department suspension and other responsibility matters. Um, the, there are two EEOP certificates that you have to sign and um, standard and special and supplemental conditions. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second for approval for signature. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Get those assigned for you a little bit later. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> uh, Sheriff Palmer, or his representative, uh, we have the suspension list. Yes, I did. I'm sorry, I couldn't see you behind the post. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am going to present with my chief tax deputy here the suspension list for the taxes. I'll pass out these copies, and I'm sure Sean, being new, you're going to ask some questions about so she can explain. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. It's easier that way, Sean. <laughs> Make, Thank yeah. you. Making sure my name is on it. Yeah, the biggest question, <laughs> am I on this? Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> That's where it's got to look at. 
Okay, so you have several lists in front of you. Uh, the first is um, the list of tickets that will be suspended from the sale due to bankruptcy. We are not permitted to sell those, of course, because of uh, their <coughs> status. Um, also within that list are tickets that the property was certified to the auditor last year, meaning they were to be sold, no one bid on them, so we certify those to the auditor to collect on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So those have been suspended. And uh, also those that um, are in litigation with the Department of Highways for condemnation. Now we do have one that's in question that is not included in the list. We are working with the assessor's office and the Department of Highways to actually identify the exact parcel mm -hmm. and what ticket that it, it appears on. So we will probably be back before you next week unless it's already paid, but we're unable to identify it and we're working uh, with all parties to, to properly identify that property so that we make sure that we don't sell it. Um, next, um, there are two tickets that are in question. One is a double assessed. It's assessed in two different names, the same parcel, and we <coughs> no one has been able to figure that one out yet. Uh, the next is, um, oh, well, that would be that one. This one is it is a double assessment and so we can't sell it. It's been paid on in one name but not in another, so we are suspending that. Uh, the final list is something new this year. Um, you'll also find in there uh, a legal memorandum from uh, then auditor Lisa <coughs> Hopkins. Yeah. And these are being suspended because they are royalty payment tax tickets, which are not to be sold. Um, that was always in question is if they were a real estate ticket or personal property. Um, so after all the court uh, hearings, it has been determined that those are to be suspended as well. So you'll see that's new this year, and there's a, a list of those included. So they are separated from the right from land. the actual from the from the actual from land. Actual yeah, this property. is just the it would be a tax on the royalty payment that they royalty receive. Payment only. Yeah, right. and those okay. are submitted by the uh, mineral companies okay. that are producing. Okay. So, so the the list that you brought us a while back. That was everything that was delinquent Correct. for 2016. Since then, the ones that have paid. Right. Um, we, yeah, we are down to about 1,400 properties. And then with this, there's probably about four or 500 here. Okay. So we're still sitting on about 1,000. Okay. So Does I'm that <coughs> course correlate with the list that was in the paper? Yes. This, this That's morning. the complete list. That's we, the complete list right, with we do these? Not, we do not edit that list every week because it would be almost impossible to No, I understand. And for the newspaper So receive. that list includes these, some Correct. that will be, will be suspended. Except for bankruptcies, we're not allowed to publish bankruptcies. Okay. Can I also ask a question? Sure. I noticed, what do we do with, I mean, I saw Eastern Associate Coal and Eastern Royalty Corporation. Is Eastern Royalty Corporation the same as Eastern? Yes. And that's what I assume. So, and there's close to 100 of those. I mean, right. And what are those basically... Could you just explain why we have so many of those? I mean, is that a bankruptcy? That or? is a bankruptcy, yes. Which okay. they do pay. Oh, okay. they They are paying. It's just that not in time for the sale. Gotcha. And we do those as a manual collection. Okay. Because so. I, I just saw there's a hundred of those. Yes. yes. Okay. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you both. Thank you very much. Okay, next we will have the opening of requests for proposals from the uh, Montgomery County Commission website, website design and support services. How many do we have? We have, um, <coughs> to give a little background, uh, we did a, a source of sought or a request for qualifications. We had five responses to that. Uh, they were all deemed uh, in compliance with the, the minimal amount of uh, uh, right. information that we asked for. So then we sent a revised, or actually an RFP out to those five that were pre-qualified, pre <coughs> uh, asking for <coughs> a cost and a technical proposal that dove a little deeper into what we're actually looking at. So we had solicited five and we received five back and these were all received by the due date and time as noted on the here. So go ahead and hand two down to Tom. Okay. And How many did we have total? Five total. Oh, okay. So you should have uh, hand Three. one, hand add one. Okay. Yeah. So you each have two and then I have one. Okay. Um, when you open them, all we're opening them to, to verify is that they submitted uh, two separate proposals, one for technical and one for cost. 
and they should be separated. Okay, so here's the technical. The first one I'll just say is West, West Virginia Network, WVNET, on 837 Chestnut Ridge Road, and they do have it separated. And, yes. Okay. We have mine merged, and we have both separated. Okay. Uh, I have one from Technology Services Group out of Tri Delphia, West Virginia, and uh, the technical and the cost are separated. Uh, let's see who this is. Hold on. Revise R E V I Z E government websites out of wow. <clears throat> Troy, Michigan, and they are separated correctly. I'm not allowed to open up the cost thing. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have Civic Plus, and actually they have three copies of the yeah. uh, Tec the technical proposal, right. and yes, the other is separated. I have not opened it yet. Yeah, no. yeah okay. you don't open up the right. Gotcha. The cost. Yes. So now, where we go from here? Okay, is that is that all five? Yes. Yes. Okay. Two. <clears throat> so, with with your guys' permission, what I'd like to do is move on to the technical evaluation, and I would mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, administer that that process. We'll have our IT people uh, provide the technical evaluations. I have all the criteria for them. All they have to do is take the technical proposals. After I scour them, just to make sure there's no cost information in there. Sometimes they they leak out information, okay. but I would like to review those, make sure that there's no cost information, and turn it over to our IT staff to do a technical evaluation. Okay. Uh, the way we set this up is a, with this type of service. Uh, it's usually better if you actually see what they're talking about for us to make that decision. Maybe not for the technical people to make the decision. So once they've done the preliminary technical evaluation. Uh, we will get any questions that they have regarding the proposals, and then we're going to set aside a time for the vendors to do a, uh, a WebEx uh, demonstration where we can ask them any additional questions, uh, nothing that can add to their proposal, but only right. for clarification, uh, any, any issues that we see, and also to basically demonstrate uh, uh, some of the things that they have in mind, and we can ask them about, you know, maybe we don't know what that technology right. is, but hey, I want to do this. So uh, we scheduled that date for November 3rd. Um, one of our IT guys is on vacation and asked if we could push that back. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. So we can push it. We'll figure out a time that works. Okay. Uh, but what we'll need to do is contact the vendors and give them that date. Okay. And so we'll have them come in. We'll allow like 45 minutes for each. Um, and we'll schedule them if you guys want to participate and, and watch in. Uh, and then from that point, we'll finalize the technical evaluations. And I'll uh, combine that with, I'll do a cost analysis and combine the two and then come back to the commission with a, a recommended uh, a successful offer. Okay. okay. I don't think we need to make a motion regarding this at this time, do we? Yep. Okay. No, um, yeah. unless you think so. All right. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> and thank you for your help. <laughs> yes. All right. Next, we have the announcement of the honorable mention entries from the 2017 County Flag Contest, and they are Casey Merrill from Morgantown, West Virginia, yeah. Caitlin Hickard from Wadestown, West Virginia, hmm. Trent Stewart from Morgantown, West Virginia, Julia Oliverio from Morgantown, West Virginia, San Tadeo, Silver Springs, Maryland, and Patty Colbank from Morgantown, West Virginia. So congratulations yes. to all these honorable mentions. Uh, it was a hard decision to try and select, but I think you know we've really got uh, a lot of talent in the community. And just to, for clarification, <clears throat> so the public knows, what is the next step? to make a flag a flag. <laughs> well, we've already, we've already been in contact oh. with our vendor that we normally purchase our flags for all of our buildings. Okay. And they have hooked us up with a designer that has taken the image and they are in the process of transferring that over to a flag, so. And could you ask them, like, quantities? Because I've been already. Well, we've I, already ordered five. Yeah. 
um, and then an extra one um, with the fringe that's going to be a display <coughs> for in here. Okay. Um, so if if I'd like to just sell all this that we might want to sell because I've already been contacted by three people who are not even from this area but love the flag, but like the flag, yes, and they okay. want to take it. So just an idea of the cost would be. Oh well, yeah. I don't know that. Well, yeah, that's what I'm it's, Yeah, it's going to be dependent upon size. Yeah. In other words, uh, you know. It, Obviously, okay. a lot of people don't want a standard size flag to fly from a 25 foot flagpole right. Um, right. You know, for right. their house. Uh, like but they these, might want. These flags are two by three. Yes. Okay. Um, but the flag that we got for our outside is, I believe, a four by six Great. flag. So, and okay. I think they offer a three by five as well. So, okay. It depends if we just on what some size. ideas. That would be great. Oh, so you want prices for what size? Yeah, I'd like some yes, prices just, for sizes. Just yes. so people would know, because then we could ask for people, because there is an interest. And I've also had several schools call me and said they would like to buy one for their school. Okay. So I thought that was kind of neat. And in fact, Morgantown I is already ready to put the money down. Okay. They're very excited. Okay. Thanks. I'll get you, I'll get you the prices. Okay. Good. All right. And Ben, I'd be appreciated if you make sure that all those names get in the paper. We didn't get a chance. We forgot to mention those just last week when we had Andrew's presentation. But yeah. uh, uh, there were, really was a hard decision going through all these, and any one of these could have very easily been the design that was chosen. I mean, it was a. Uh, but um, I think we we made the right decision. But uh, we want to make sure that we uh, gave oh, these uh, yeah. individuals some. Uh, notoriety and they are they get $25 yes they are also, also being mailed $25 checks all right and I have the call I'll provide <laughs> you <laughs> next yes correspondence <laughs> okay uh, we received a letter from Robin Bailey secretary to chief judge Russell Clodges requesting use of courtroom number one for his uh, forensics class that he holds He's been doing this for many, many yes. years, right. um, so it's just asking you to make sure that it's okay if they continue to use that, and also to make arrangements for the uh, for parking on the back deck after hours. Yes. So we'll make sure that we forward that on to Mr. Doyle if you all approve. Move to approve. Second. Then properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next. Yes. Um, also have. <coughs> A letter from residents of Stonewood Forest and Gum, Gum Springs Road regarding safety conditions on the Grafton Road. And, and Tom is actually, I'm sorry, Commissioner uh, Bloom is the one that actually gave this to me to put on the agenda. So if you want to. Just basically, um, and I've been in touch with Sheriff Palmer, who's also been out there numerous times. Basically, we have a situation out there in Grafton Road, and it's a very unfortunate that no matter what we do, we put the police out there, they wait, they look. They're speeding, but now it's to the point, two problems. One is that they are now passing buses with the red light, so people are trying to get their license plates and so on. And also you have a problem out at Ridgedale School that right now the principal is walking out in a 55-mile-an-hour road to try and stop the cars to get the buses out because no one will let it out. And they're just very concerned. So they asked if we could pass this on to the DOH, which I said I would, and then once we could set up a meeting with the sheriff and the DOH just to talk about what, I don't even know what the options are, but at least I think they wanted their concerns to be heard and that you were aware of it. So you don't have to read in the record, just say that we have a record and we could just give it to uh, the clerk so that we have a copy of it. And if we can send a copy, I'd like to move that we send it to the DOH and, and try and set up a meeting down the road. Okay. Yeah. Second. Okay. Uh, it's been properly moved in the second to forward this letter to the DOH. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No problem. Thank you. They'll be very pleased. <laughs> and uh, I do want to make it clear, Sheriff has been out there yeah. enormous times. I don't even know if you want to just say it. I know you're out there all the time. I know somebody's scheduled out there <laughs> on the buses in the morning, and I have somebody yes. out there in the afternoon. Yes. Yeah. So we're trying to alleviate the problem. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other correspondence? Uh, yes, I just have one thing that came in on uh, Monday, the first quarter levy spending report for Bow Park uh, in, in accordance with the levy fund okay. agreement. Good. <clears throat> Good. Any unfinished business? Hearing none, we'll move to new business. Uh, first, to consider a request by Sheriff Perry Palmer regarding transfer of ownership of the retiring bomb detention canine. Uh, is that Cloudy and not Cody? Cody. Cody? Okay. Cody. To his hand, I wanted to make sure I got it right. Uh, 
Sergeant Andy Pentis. So I believe this requires an action by us. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you. Uh, I I wouldn't think yes. uh, that anybody would not want to have uh, <laughs> their their dog a yes. service dog that's been with them for that many years. So, next uh, consideration of the cross proposal submitted by Alpha Architects Engineers for design and engineering services for the Camp Muffley Pool. Um, this is money that right. we received from a grant last year from Hazel Ruby McQueen that we have employed Alpha Associates, but this just makes it official that they would be doing the design for the pool. $25,000. Of $25,000. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Any other new business before us? Hearing none, uh, we'll move to reports from elected officials. Ooh. Sheriff? Real quick. I would just t like to take this opportunity to recognize my chief tax deputy, Kelly Palmer, who attended the <coughs> luncheon this past Monday in Charleston as being recognized as one of the top 50 selected women. They call it the Wonder Woman Awards wow. for her community services throughout the whole state. And not just because she's my sister, but because she does an outstanding <laughs> job. I just want to get that out. Okay. In spite of being your sister. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations. So you're picking up lunch today for us? <laughs> That's why great. did it take them so long to realize what we already know? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Any other reports from elected officials? Hearing none, we'll move to reports from county commissioners. John? I'll be very brief. Um, I did want to mention, um, I don't know whether the public knows, but we have a lot of uh, construction going on in the building here. Uh, there's a redoing of the area downstairs in the clerk's office, and I stopped by last night. Mm -hmm. uh, they had that one room, the ceiling tore down, wow. and have you seen that with all the wires? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, all these years of wires just being <clears throat> shoved up in the ceiling for uh, IT stuff and electrical. The electrical is all in good shape, but uh, there was just wires everywhere. It was amazing what it looked like, and those guys really are um, doing a first-class job. They're doing afternoon shift so that they can work with the county clerk staff, and uh, they've uh, so far they've been able to stay on schedule. Um, I know that uh, they, they want to keep on schedule so it doesn't interfere, interfere with deer season too much, Which, uh, but uh, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that Bobby's not here, but uh, they're really doing a, a good job. Um, and the only other thing is I've been doing a lot of work with the Red Committee. That's the Runway Extension Development uh, Committee. Uh, we're really working hard on trying to get our runway extension justification done. Uh, we've had a number of meetings this week. Um, we're moving towards trying to hit a uh, November uh, 9th deadline for compiling the most recent uh, amount of information uh, for the FAA study, then, then the Michael Baker and Associates will take that information and we're shooting for having the uh, that uh, justification submitted uh, right around Thanksgiving time. So um, I had mentioned this to, I, I floated this to Renetta just to make sure if it didn't make any, if it was okay, but uh, I may need some brute force to actually take these surveys and contact charters and uh, get the information that we need. Mm -hmm. What happened is the last time they did a, a passive survey and they didn't have enough respondents, so it wasn't enough for the FAA to, uh, you know, they said, you don't have, there's, there's a small sample here. So uh, we did clarify that with them that we can actually solicit that information that, you know, you didn't have to just wait for someone to come and take a survey or go online, that you can actually solicit the information uh, and once they gave us the, the go ahead uh, we have a green you know W's got somebody that's um, dedicated that's going to reach out to all the Big Ten Big 12 schools and a lot of those uh, alumni associations and the charter members so we're trying to pull all that information together so we may need, may need some brute force to actually make some calls and I suggested if we can utilize Colleen if she's available and with with your guys approval it'll probably be maybe <coughs> maybe eight hours in the next two weeks. It shouldn't be any more than 16 hours in two weeks, if that's okay with you guys. I, I think it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, quite frankly, I mean, we've all discussed it. Uh, this is of eminent importance to, um, you know, to Morgantown, to Montague County, to the entire community. So. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, all good news, too. Uh, first, 
Let's say that uh, a couple weeks ago, I was able to speak in front of WV student government to promote the, the uh, road bond. They were very supportive, and every time when WV student leadership is here, I want to make sure that it is recognized. And one of the things we're doing, and I've asked them to consider, and it, it's kind of neat, it's a Hands of Hope campaign. <laughs> Basically, to support the Pantry Plus More program, we worked out a deal with WVU Transportation and Parking, and I just want to promote this. It's a really neat idea. If you have a parking ticket that costs $20, you can turn the ticket in and instead buy one of these four packages of needs that we have, which is only 15, and then you lose they exempt the parking ticket. So I thought it was a really neat idea, and I wanted to share that with the student government because they've been you know, really helpful with the Pantry Plus program. Uh, second good news, I want to hand this out to you. Something that I thought was real interesting, as you know, I'm on the Mon River Trails Conservancy, and I'll give this to you. Sorry. <clears throat> and it's real neat to see, I'll give this one to, sorry, to Renetta, the amount of use that's used down on the trail. And when you look at the number in the last two and a half years, five hundred one thousand dollars, five hundred one thousand people have used the Rails of Trail, and almost two hundred thousand each year. So the Rails of Trails is really important, and I especially bring it up with the things that are going on with the depot and with the buses. So I just want to make sure that you know we are involved, and I do want you to know I sent a personal letter to Bill Kowecki asking that a report be given during our community leadership program for an update of what's going on down there. So, I, But I did want you to see the numbers. It is amazing how many people do use that. Um, I think that's that. Oh, and finally, uh, well, tomorrow is the Mason-Dixon food giveaway. We are giving away free food again, 15,000 pounds of vegetables and produce. And I was fortunate for the first time in several years, I did actually take a vacation, go to Florida, and I always used to worry about people concerned about pedestrian traffic in Morgantown and walking across the street. Well, I did not realize they have roads then they have a bike path. Then they have what I did not know, golf cart path. And I almost got run over three <coughs> times by golf carts because I was so worried about the road. But I'm really glad in a way we don't have to worry about those. But, but it, was, it was good to get away. But it, being down there, a lot of West Virginians, very supportive, and they all wanted to know what was going on in Montegate County. So I'm just real pleased to report that. Thank okay. you. And just to clarify, that yes. was, I had an ask. You don't have an issue with me utilizing Colleen, do you? For what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you might not have been paying attention. <laughs> no, when I was talking about assisting with pulling information from the Oh, service. no, no, okay. no, no. I just, I just, I just wanted I to I thought make you sure. meant us. I thought you were going to ask me. No, 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 no. I just want to make sure you did. No, sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I looked to my right to see if he had something to say, and he amazed me by having nothing to say. So, sorry, Tom. <laughs> yeah. I do have another issue, but I thought we'd wait till a after to discuss it. So another work session. Okay. Uh, actually, both, both yeah. these issues are very, I mean, oh, very, okay. very important. I mean, the recreation of the rails and trails is just absolutely phenomenal. Yes. And our our airport, uh, yes. our run runway extension, is uh, of utmost importance. Um, as I said to the community. So thank you for your work, and I, yeah. I'm I'm happy if Colleen accepts this additional yes. responsibility Indeed. that she would do so. So. Uh, Sunday was a 4-H Achievement Banquet, which I attended. Um, yesterday was the Extension Services meeting. Uh, not too much to report from that. Uh, election of officers was about the only thing that was done. Uh, Friday, we do have the PACE uh, Awards Center. I have gone to this for several years and uh, will be in attendance. Good. Monday morning, I uh, have a meeting with the DOH to go two places. One is to address uh, the fire hydrant that's just beside <laughs> Mason-Dixon Park, and then uh, we hope to go to the um, uh, the Osage Park to, to look at that particular project to see what might be able to be done. Solid Waste Authority also meets on Monday, and uh, hopefully, I don't know whether all of us will be there, but I think Tom and I will be. Uh, we will have a ribbon cutting at Colasante's restaurant. Yes. Uh, because this is something that, uh, you know, e even though was consumed by fire, was built back up. It's a beautiful place. Uh, I know we've all been there because <laughs> I was there uh, just right before uh, you left, and uh, you had been there earlier that week. Yeah. So uh, that My would son would not forgive me if I did not go there exactly. because he played for their baseball team oh, okay. for years. <laughs> so I'm going to represent him. All right. <laughs> 
And hearing nothing else, uh, I'll have a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Properly moved and second to adjourn. Thank you.